Hi and welcome to another Pick a Card general reading. I'm so excited to bring this reading to you guys because it is in collaboration with another wonderful tarot reader on YouTube. When I first started watching tarot videos on YouTube, my favorite videos were the ones where the readers collaborated with each other to you know, produce the same topic, but completely different readings. It was a beautiful opportunity to be able to figure out, you know, if other tarot readers are able to tune into your energies, to explore other tarot readers, as well as to cross-reference information. For someone like me who can be highly analytical, I think it's amazing to get as much information as you can from as many sources as you can. So today's video is in collaboration with Gifted Soul. I do have a link to her channel in the description box below. It is going to be above the timestamps, easy to find. Um, so make sure that if you've come to this video first, that you do go over to her channel, show her some love, have a look at her reading. It's the exact same topic. Pick a group and see if you're able to cross-reference any information. You know, I don't doubt that her abilities are able to pick up on things that I may have missed. She is very gifted and talented in what she does. So do be sure to check out her channel below and have a look at that reading. Speaking of readings, today's reading is about your future spouse. This was a beautiful suggestion from a wonderful subscriber. We're asking spirit for a love letter from your future spouse. So as usual, I have four groups. This reading will have an extended on Patreon as well, where we will take these four groups um, further we'll be looking at the blocks or the potential challenges of this connection with your future spouse we'll be looking at timing by delving into your circumstances and the time that they commit to you to help you understand if you've already met this person or if they're very close and we will be looking at personality traits now at the time that i'm filming this intro i have already filmed all of your groups so i know what each of them entail and it's such beautiful energy i can't wait for you guys to tune in now you do have a channeled message associated with your four groups as well. I've channeled these messages before I filmed any of the groups and they are color coordinated. If that helps you pick your group today, I do also have crystal towers. If that helps you pick your group today, group, excuse me, group one, you are the amethyst crystal tower. Group two, you are the rose quartz crystal tower. Group three, you are the citrine crystal tower. It is a little bit green. It doesn't look like it, but it is. There's this tiny faint there. I've been filming all day, so it's a bit dark now. And group four, you are the clear quartz rock crystal tower. You will also have songs in the description box below to aid you in your reading. The songs may contain additional messages in the lyrics. The videos can be distracting at times, so make sure you have a look at the lyrics. When you're ready, feel free to pause the video if you need more time. Otherwise, check your timestamps in the description box below and join me in your reading. Hi, group one, and welcome. If you chose the Amethyst Tower, then this is going to be your reading. So group one, in today's reading, we are asking spirit for a love letter from your future spouse. I don't know if I'll be channeling first person. Um, we'll see what comes out. I think for this reading, I do want to remain um, subjective. So I might just kind of sit back a little bit, or subjective or objective. I don't want to take the front, <laughs> the front wheel, the front seat, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, I'm going to be pulling tarot in this reading. I'm going to be um, getting channeled messages and I will get an oracle card as well to give us the overall energy of your relationship with your future spouse. In the extended, because there will be an extended to this reading, it'll be on Patreon, the link is in the description box below. We will be talking about blockages, um, any blocks that might this connection might be facing currently, as well as in the future, the rough timing of like when this person might come into your life, as well as their personality traits. Um, so that will all be in the extended, which will be on Patreon. So, group one, please, spirit. This is your um, little personal channeled love letter as well, which I will read at the end. Okay, so starting with your tarot, oh, excuse me, group one, please, spirit, what would their future spouse like to say to them? You get a love letter for group 
one from their future spouse. Love letter. Group one from their future spouse. Oh, there's so much shuffling going on. Like, literally, it's bizarre to see, because obviously I am shuffling, but all the cards are just flipping around and mixed up amongst each other. What does that look like? Oh, yeah. I'll get another clarifying row, please. Future love letter. A love letter from their future spouse. <laughs> oh, wow. This is so cute. I think yours is going to be first person. I can hear them talking so clearly already. Come on. One more card. What else? Oopsie daisy. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, <laughs> your bottom deck energy is temperance. Temperance looks so lovely in this deck too. I just think it's the most beautiful, bright, colourful card. Okay. So the main thing that's calling out to me is this hermit energy here. Your person was saying, I always thought I was going to be alone. I always thought that no one would measure up. I always saw myself as being permanently alone and isolated and then you came into my life and you made me realize that I wanted more you made me realize that I am someone who is deeply loyal and committed and family orientated I'm not actually this hermit character everything I do I do for you everything I am I am for you you have inspired me to be this incredible King of Pentacles character that I am today. You have inspired me to be the, I don't want to say father, but overall the strong, um, abundant provider that I am today. I just want so much for us and for our family, and I, I crave for more expansion. Everything that I do I think of as a way of our family getting more having more, being more prosperous, more stable, more secure. I'm always trying to think of new ways to expand. And I honestly, at one point, I thought I was going to be alone forever. And now I can't imagine ever being alone ever again. It's like that Ed Sheeran song, I believe. <laughs> um, but literally, I just, my whole future is just painted with images of you and us and how we can expand as a, as a unit now. Your person's identifying challenges here in your first column. Your person's saying that there was some sort of conflict here, and I want to say that this could be um, opinions with the Five of Wands. Your person's saying that your connection succeeded because you overcame those opinions. You didn't let other people's opinions hold you back. You didn't let what other people thought about the two of you hold you back. It was that moment when you decided to go against um, other people's advice or what they were saying that your connection really flourished. You chose your person over other people's words. And I want to say that these challenges no longer affect your connection. They aren't something that your connection faces anymore. Um, I want to say that if this is a challenge that you're facing now, your person saying that it won't be in the future. Um, there's no worry about what other people think now. They didn't have to be the ones to... Um, what your person's trying to say is they, they didn't have to win over those people anyway. Like, it was about you. And I feel like if family were an, an issue here, as soon as your person proved to you that they were capable and able of supporting and loving you, these other people kind of appreciated that as well and understood that as well and that conflict was resolved because all they really wanted was someone who could look after you. And I see with the Two of Swords here, your connection truly flourished once you trusted your intuition, once you decided to cut out all the other factors and focus solely on what you um, believed in, what you wanted. I see that you did have some tricky moments in this connection in fact, I feel like you had to individually decide 
that this was what you wanted and this is what you wanted to do before you could elevate this connection into something more. And then very quickly, although you both came to that conclusion individually, um, you very quickly, this connection just kind of sparked into from almost nothing into something very secure, something very stable, as what your future spouse is saying. It was that moment that turned, when you both realized that other people's opinions don't matter anymore, like the ones who really care about you are just going to be happy that you're being looked after and supported and loved. Um, that's when this connection had a fighting chance with the Father of Pentacles. Your future spouse is saying that you are someone who makes them feel incredibly um, out of character in the best of ways. You are someone who challenges them and their behaviors. Your future spouse may be an earth sign um, with the father of pentacles. They may be someone who has a lot of earth in their charts. So we're talking Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Um, they're saying that you inspire spontaneity in their lives. You help them break out of boredom. You help them want more and explore more. This is someone who gets very stuck in a routine and um, they easily find themselves just feeling a little bit like content but not really happy, you know? And then you two coming together really inspired this person to think outside the box, to embrace each moment for what it is. There's something about you that makes them feel incredibly weak and strong at the same time. With temperance in reverse, it's like they lose control around you. They would do anything for you, group one. Your future spouse is saying that they're incredibly devoted to you. Um, I have a feeling that they're quite a practical person and that a lot of this connection in the early stage was about them overthinking everything. And I think that your person was impacted by other people's opinions and they weren't necessarily worried about what other people would think, but they did know that you would and they wanted to respect you and respect where you were coming from. I feel like for a lot of you, it's family. It might be them. Maybe it was their family. Something like that. You were trying to be respectful of each other's um, backgrounds and beliefs and values. Um, but there is this like transformative energy here where you two just seem to expand together and that the limit does not exist with this connection your future spouse would tell you that you are someone who inspires them to want to be so much more than they were yesterday like they hold you and they just think of how they can provide more for you and to you and to give more to this family for some of you this is someone who you will have kids with or you may be you already have kids with them but I do feel like that is something that's on the cards here, especially with this creature. It's a flame, but it almost looks like a, a stork carrying a child. Um, but there's a lot of inspiration here. There's a lot of like, you inspire me to break out of my mold. You inspire me to be more for myself. And you inspire me to want to be more creative. Temperance energy is like Jupiter, Sagittarius energy. There's a lot of luck here, but there's a sense of like, I have no control of it. <laughs> like, you know, very spontaneous energy. It's just kind of spiraling and I, I like it. It's exciting because we're only spiraling up, like no one's spiraling down here. So it's an exciting energy. Now, as we move over here to the third column, your future spouse is saying that um, there's something about this connection that was misjudged somewhere along the lines. With judgment and the page of wands or the son of wands in reverse, your future spouse is saying that um, they were in denial or there was some sort of level of like needing to gain experience and wisdom from other areas or other factors before this connection could come together. Your future spouse would say that they never, ever, ever meant to, to hurt you for some of you, this connection had a period of separation before it could fully flourish and become a, a real grounded, committed, stable union. Um, for some of you, this person is indicating that they had to go out and gain experience. This person didn't have a lot of relationships before they met you. They may have had to enter some sort of maybe karmic relationship that helped show them what they truly want and value, and it helped guide their judgment. It helped give them experience and wisdom. It helped awaken them to what they truly want and what kind of relationships they would like to pursue. With the Son of Wands here, your person is coming from an experience of, um, it's almost like a false start, 
um, but they weren't wise enough to maintain a committed relationship when they first met you. They were quite youthful and reckless and just a little bit careless. It's not to say that the feelings weren't there, they just didn't know how to cultivate them into something more stable. So your person is indicating here that all of their past experiences, and this is mutual, this is on your side as well, led to this moment of the two of you finally coming together. And there is an immense sense of gratitude here and just general joy. Like I feel peace, I feel connection. There's just a genuine feeling as though all of this had to happen in order for the two of you to come together as your perfectly evolved selves um, with all of, you know, whatever the hell happened in the past, when I say perfect, I mean that the timing was perfect. I mean that you did have to engage in other karmic cycles and then you came together exactly when you were intended to as the beings of, with experience that you had. Um, so there's this deep sense of like understanding here and acknowledgement that when you first met, you weren't necessarily ready for what <laughs> was lying ahead. Um, there was a feeling as though you needed to gain that experience and wisdom. One or both of you did. And I feel like there's an appreciation for that in this connection. It makes you want to be together even more because you realize now that you were just meant to be together. And all the experiences in between have helped shape this connection to be so strong and prosperous, can I say. So over here in our fourth row, we have the Ten of Wands reversed with the Two of Pentacles reversed as well as the Six of Wands reversed. Now, I don't actually feel like the Six of Wands reversed is a bad card. None of these are, actually. Your person is highlighting the fact that you are someone in this relationship, or and maybe in the past, who would take on a lot of people's problems. You would, you would just give and devote yourself to people. Your person acknowledges that in this reading. Your future spouse is saying that in this relationship, you are constantly, both of you, are striving to support and balance each other, to help offer support to each other's responsibilities, to make sure that nobody reaches this stage here with the Ten of Swords, sorry, I'm sure I said Wands, with the Ten of Swords where you feel overwhelmed and in the dark and unsupported and as though you're carrying all of the pain in the relationship. I want to say that your relationship is, is incredibly balanced and supportive, but mostly because communication is completely open, like it never gets to this point again. I feel like with this Ten of Swords here, there is a moment, um, this might be a clue for some of you as to who this person is, if you don't follow us into the extended, there is um, going to be a moment in some of your connections where there's an element of... Um, it's like silence, like you don't get to talk to each other. Um, maybe there's a separation. It feels like in that moment, one or both of you feels betrayed um, by the other's actions or lack of actions, and you start to overthink this and overthink the connection and the chemistry and the spark. And it's, it's like you finally have the opportunity to reconnect and you both make it very clear in that moment that you're never going to let that happen again. You both make it very clear that your connection does not need to have that, you know, you both want to constantly be checking in on each other. How are you? How are you going? And it's not to the point where it's overbearing. Like, <laughs> it's not to the point where you can't even have a shower without your person going, hey, I haven't spoken to you in five minutes. Like, <laughs> how are you doing? Um... It's more so that I feel like um, you just have this beautiful understanding and if any one of you is feeling a little bit insecure or a little bit unsure, the other one picks up on that and is able to support them. Now the main reason I'm kind of saying this is because with the Two of Pentacles here, someone's situation in terms of their work or just their responsibilities does get a little bit demanding. I think that you or your spouse, um, they have a demanding career or they have a demanding role in the community. Something about their daily schedule becomes quite demanding and it pulls them away from you at times. They might need to travel for work 
or they might just have weird working hours. For example, they might work night shifts or they might work on like a fly-in, fly-out roster where they're here one week and the next week they're working away. Um, there's this feeling as though timing is needing to be juggled and I see you guys constantly like checking in with each other during this time to reassure each other and support each other when you are away or when the daily routine gets disrupted. Now with the six of wands reversed, I don't think this is a bad energy. What I'm feeling here is a sense of privacy. Um, it's this feeling of like, not everyone needs to know our business. Let's just spend some quiet time alone. Um, we don't need to showcase our relationship all over social media. Like we know we're together. Um, and it's not a sense of like shame or needing to hide anything. It's just that your connection is something that is so coveted and protected by both of you. And I feel like because of this weird routine here with the daily routine schedule being a little bit hectic, um, when you do have time together, I see you like stealing time away for each other, like booking rooms and not telling people that you're, um, you're hiding out, you know, like just like romantic getaways, or even if you're just at home, like the curtains are closed, the aircon's on, you're snuggled up on the couch, watching TV, just lapping up the time that you have together, just enjoying each other's company and not worrying about like needing to make up appearances, basically. I think that your connection thrives because you have so much understanding and respect for one another. And it's not about proving anything to anyone. When you do have the moment to be around other people, I think there is a lot of support there. But because of your difference in daily schedules or work or something about like someone's just got a really hectic schedule when you do have the time to hang out it's about the two of you and it's about protecting your connection and just making sure that you're both feeling loved and supported so that's a beautiful energy group one i am now going to get channeled messages to see what your future spouse would say to you <clears throat> this is a beautiful energy all right So group one, please, spirit, what would their future spouse say to them if they could say anything? Oh, okay. <laughs> Think before you act. Interesting. I'm going to put that down and I'll get the cards out first. We have the Ace of Swords. So there was definitely a moment of clarity here. I feel like, yeah, listen, when we put those cards next to each other, Think Before You Act was inspired by the Five of Swords for me. It's this hesitancy someone needing to walk away or withdraw or um, success with social misfortune. There's this certain sense that other people's opinions were factored in and the clarity or the, the connection really becomes something once you stop thinking about what other people are going to um, think. You know, you stop considering other people's opinions. You focus more on each other. I see this Ace of Swords moment as a moment of clarity that you both reach and you both decide that, you know, if the opportunity ha comes again where the two of you can be together, you're not going to worry about what other people think anymore. You're just going to go for what your heart wants and the heart wants each other. We also have, you are so beautiful, why do you need me? Nine of Pentacles in the reverse. So your future spouse would like to tell you that there were moments, um, maybe when they first met you, where they felt insecure in the connection, but they want to sh tell you that the two of you have such a balanced um, role in this connection. You're so supportive of each other. You both support each other's dreams, each other's visions. There's this sense of like appreciation and understanding for each other's insecurities. I'm getting this nip nipping it in the bud nipping it in the bud. So if one person has concerns, they raise them immediately um, and the two of you talk about it until you both feel comfortable and it's resolved, you know? So insecurities are addressed. They're not swept under the rug. They're not gaslighted. They're not, um, you know, sort of danced around. It's something that is discussed until it isn't an issue anymore. And the both of you have a lot of security in this relationship. I feel like both of you are quite stable and independent still within this relationship. There's this feeling of expansion here, like two strong individuals expanding together. And your person, um, one of the main things that they were found attractive about you was the fact that you put your own needs first, the fact that you do have a lot going on for you. So 
Your person seems to be the kind of like practical minded person who goes for someone who looks after themselves, who has ambitions, who wants to expand and they recognize that in you. So um, there's a sense of appreciating each other's individuality and wanting to be in union while continuing to grow as individuals. So what else would group one's person say to them? I'm obsessed with your body. Group one, your person would say that they wish they had more intimate moments with you. So I feel like their schedule is a little bit all over the place. Your person would say that um, <laughs> it's, it's supposed to be a general reading, but um, let's just say that they really enjoy those moments, those early mornings when it's just the two of you. I just want to say, your person, I can't beat around the bush. They're saying that the sex is great. Like, there's something about this. And I'm getting Capricorn energy again with that devil card. I am biased being a Capricorn, but um, they're saying that there's there's so much attraction here and I feel like both of your bodies undergo changes in your connection there's a feeling of maybe someone has surgery I don't know <laughs> where that came from um, I don't know what kind of surgery I'll keep it at that because it's a general reading but your bodies undergo changes and yet there is still this beautiful attraction this magnetic like nobody else matters in the world attraction to the point where like at times you do have to pull yourself away and I think that when your person first saw you they were very physically attracted to you um, which made them question their connection it made them think that it was just lust um, it made them think before they acted because they thought the feelings would disappear but they didn't the feelings only grew Group one, please. We sound I'm too afraid to talk to you in the reverse. Yes, and this is going under the Ace of Swords. So your person would say that there was a period when they were intimidated by this connection, perhaps, or just by the fact, um, their feelings, I would say. They came on really strong, and it was something that they didn't really feel comfortable talking about. Um, with the Ace of Swords here, they overcome this. Both of you reach a sense of clarity, and I do see you having that um, moment. I was about to say heart-to-heart -heart conversation where you're able to discuss how you're both feeling. You're able to create that sense of lightness because up until that moment, it's like you're both in the dark. You both intuitively feel each other, but you're not really sure of what's actually happening. So I see the blindfolds coming off, and you're both able to communicate about how you feel. Honestly, moving forward, your connection has so much balanced communication. Fears are addressed immediately so that it never reaches that point again, so that you're never feeling betrayed, you're never feeling afraid or concerned or insecure. All um, fears are addressed immediately. And your last card is I want you to choose. So I see your person really like putting your... Um, like opinions and needs and concerns to a high regard like they are constantly asking you if you're comfortable with that factoring you into all decisions in terms of your relationship um there's honestly this equal give and take like your person is saying with this card that they wouldn't make a, an important decision without first consulting you whether it's like buying a house or relocating for work or needing to shuffle um, some sort of project around, you know, they would always consult you just to figure out if there's anything else in the relationship that they, that you both have going on at that time. And your bottom deck energy is you matter. So your person is incredibly, incredibly attentive towards you. There's this real sense of connection here, like so much um, communication and a balanced sort of desire to continue growing um like support honestly so much support so in terms of oracle cards what else can you tell us about group one's connection with their future spouse okay we have listening yes literally i just see you guys talking to each other a lot maybe on the phone a lot and constantly listening to each other like you value each other's opinions highly there's a lot of like a really clear communication and appreciating each other's stance i see you guys addressing your fears immediately like there's never a moment in this relationship where you feel like you're in the dark when you are committed to this person they are completely committed to you 
it is incredibly supportive and you both take the time to listen to each other's fears and concerns and you use your time productively too even if you are just chilling on the couch you know it's productive time spent together to bond to hold each other to listen to each other to talk about what each other are going through you always feel so connected that is why this person is your future spouse there's never any questions about what's going on. Now I'm going to read your letter. Oh, I have solitude here reversed. So I'm feeling that hermit reversed again. Your person is a little bit of a lone wolf. They kind of just do their own thing. And then all of a sudden they're connected to you and they're like, I can't imagine life without you. <laughs> I, can, I can't imagine living without you now. So your message. Oh, okay. This is cute. You got, um, in terms of numbers, so I kind of was feeling different numbers for each group. Please don't make this an exclusive thing. If these numbers don't resonate for you, then don't let them take away from the messages that do resonate. But numbers for you I got were 4, 30, and 1. And I also got 31. So that might be significant. It could be birthdays. It could just be significant numbers. Now your message is, my darling, I smile every time I think of you. Your touch is like a weapon used against me in the best possible way. We are so connected, so together, even if we must be apart. I love you with every breath I possess, yours forever. Oh, that's so cute. So group one, that is what I have for you. I'm going to take this into the extended now. In the extended, we'll be looking at potential blocks or challenges that your connection may face. We're going to be looking at timing, um, mostly around circumstances, um, so that you can understand when this person or this connection might be entering your life in terms of the commitment side. And we'll be looking at personality traits from my tissue box as well. So if you want to follow me over to the extended, the link to the our Patreon community is in the description box below. Otherwise, if this is where you are leaving me, then I shall see you in another video. Look after yourselves, you guys. Bye. Hi, group two, and welcome. If you chose the Rose Quartz Tower, then this is going to be your reading. So today, it's going to be a, a little bit of a lengthy one, only because we have an extended as well. Um, this reading is going to be asking the spirit about your future spouse. This was a beautiful suggestion from a wonderful subscriber. We're asking spirit for a love letter from your future spouse. So in this YouTube reading, I will be going into um, the messages from your person. I'll be getting tarot. Oh, ooh, you already got a card. I'm taking it. I'll be getting tarot. I'll be getting um, channeled messages and also an oracle card to reflect the overall energy of your connection. And then we'll be reading this little um, love note from them as well, which I channeled before I filmed. Now, in the extended, I'll be going into the potential blocks and challenges of your connection, as well as the timing, like when this person will come into your life and their personality traits. That will be in the extended, which will be on Patreon. So the link for that is in the description below. Group two spirit. What can you tell me about their person? You've got the page of pentacles here now. Group two, future spouse, love letter, please. Ooh. We have the magician. Wowzers, big energy. Big energy for group two. I mean, you guys got rose quartz. Are we really questioning the energy? We now have the seven. Oh my god. We have the seven of wands with the lovers card. Like, who are you guys? Please comment down below. You're amazing. Your person thinks you're amazing too. Your person thinks you're incredible. Okay, listen, I'm going to cut it there. I've got a lot of energy out here. And we have the seven of swords as your bottom deck energy. Okay. Interesting. Interesting to like go from all of this to here. All right, so what I'm feeling, you guys, grew to your future spouse would tell you that they have so much love for you. They have a massive appreciation for you. And listen, as I'm focusing on this, my eye keeps going back here. I feel like your connection had faced um, questions of loyalty. Your connection, there was something that happened where you both had to analyze each other's behaviors. You had to talk about how those actions made you feel and you had to both understand that some of the things that happened whether the intention to harm was there or not did create pain 
and I feel like the rest of your connection group too, like the reason why this is your future spouse is because they are willing to talk about this. They are willing to address this. There's this constant feeling of um, loyalty, if I'm honest. One person in this connection is constantly wondering if they're secure, if um, the other person is, is genuinely there. Um, in the sense of wanting to be with them. And I want to say that your person, although there may be doubts at one specific moment in this relationship, your person spends all of their time showing you that you're the one that they want, basically. Um, they spend this whole relationship making it up for you and proving to you that their intentions are pure and they genuinely want you as as their person with the ace of cups here the love they have for you is never ending it's constantly pouring out of them and i feel like they are incredibly devoted to you i feel like this is the kind of person who would stop everything and anything that they're doing to make sure that you feel um what's the word I want to say content but it's more than that just to make sure that you feel held and secure with the page of pentacles in reverse I'm going to say that one or both of you your relationships in the past um, either you didn't have a lot of experience or what I'm getting is like it just really stunted your growth one or both of you had a relationship in your early years that really stunted your growth and it made you um, hesitant to love again it made you hesitant to trust again is what I feel and you guys this person your future spouse it goes above and beyond to show you that they love you and they're devoted to you and they want you as their person I feel like with the page of pentacles reversed this might be someone who you met when you were younger but you didn't maybe consider to be a love option until later in life there's something about your younger years like in your 20s or your late teens um, that really shaped your opinions of this connection and the other person is is like trying to make sure that those opinions don't define this relationship because the love here is pure it's untouched it's completely um, requited is what you need to know that like you both care for each other deeply but there is this question here around authenticity of character um, I think it's because your person is such a smooth talker with this magician energy here. Perhaps they are a desirable person. Maybe they're really attractive. Maybe a lot of people have told you or shown you that they want your person. And now you're like, well, does my person want me? Like, all these people are throwing themselves at them. And obviously, yes, like, look at this cheetah. Their eyes are on this one flame. None of the other flames matter. These ones don't even have flames. They're just sticks. They've been burnt. They're out. This person will spend a lot of their connection trying to comfort you, but because they are such a smooth talker, you're constantly questioning whether they are being authentic. Now, this person is incredibly fixed on you. They're incredibly focused on you, but I can't help but feel the insecurities from your end. Maybe it's the other way around. Someone in this connection does have this feeling of insecurity that they're constantly battling with, with the seven of swords, uh, seven of, sorry, pentacles here. And before we even go into the extended, that is one of the challenges that this connection will face, is that someone feels like they have to constantly overcome um, their own fears. And I see you working through that. With the magician here, there is the opportunity to communicate, but... The magician is someone with a bit of a slippery tongue, you know. Um, their speech is very calculated. It's very well thought. Um, it addresses all of your fears and concerns to the point where you're like, is this person just saying everything that I want to hear? Like, do they mean what they say? <laughs> I just want to say that your person might have air in their uh, mercury part of their charts excuse me or it could be their moon sign i don't know there's just this feeling like they know what to say to the point where you start questioning mm, are they just saying what i want to hear um honestly i do feel like you can trust this person i think that this person is someone who is meant to be in your life um I feel like these fears and challenges can be overcome. There is a reason why you married them. There's a reason why 
you, if you're not married, there's a reason why you're so committed to each other, you know. A spouse is someone who you choose to spend a lot of time to, whether you take it to that marriage level or not. It's someone who you spend a lot of time with. Um, over here now, with the lovers and the strength card, listen, you guys, you got three major arcana and a spread of six cards. That is significant. Half of your cards are major arcana. We have the lover's card here being clarified by the strength card. The lover's card is all about choice. It's all about choosing um, from a place of, well, this is your decision to make. And I feel like you both choose strength in this relationship. You both choose courage. You both choose perseverance. No matter what challenges you face, no matter how insecure you may feel at certain moments, no matter how afraid one or both of you feels, um, you both choose strength here because your connection is strong. You both overcome the challenges you face um, because you really want this to work. You choose each other. You choose love here. And the lover's card for me is also a card that indicates a divine connection. So whether this is a soulmate or just a really high level connection, it feels like the challenges you face are inevitably overcome because you are meant to be together in this lifetime. And this is someone who you do spend a significant amount of time with. This strength card is making me think that um, one or both of you may have children. This is only going to be significant to a few of you. Um, one or both of you may have children from another connection that you bring into this relationship as well. And it's a bit of a blended family situation that feels like it could be challenging in the early stage, but honestly, it all works out in, in a way that um, I feel like the household is loud at times. <laughs> I feel like it's a little bit of a, um, an organized chaos at times, but it's a strong family union, unit is what it feels. If it's a blended family situation, it's something that the kids value because all of a sudden their family is bigger now and they appreciate their other siblings. Again, that's only going to apply for some of you though. The other message that I'm getting with this lover's card is that the two of you are one in the same. Like everything that you see in your person is what you also possess um, and vice versa. So maybe you're feeling a little bit insecure, you know, on one day and your person's looking like a bloody cheater that's just crawled out of the most photogenic David Attenborough documentary and you're out here thinking like so many people want my person like why do they choose to be with me trust me when I say that that situation is mirrored your person has those days too you both think the same you both and are emanating the same energetic frequency in the sense of your strengths and the things that limit you from being as powerful as you wish to be. So it's kind of comforting in that way because you can kind of understand where each other are coming from. When you have your down days, you can appreciate what that feeling feels like and that's a way for you to move this connection forward. Um, what else am I feeling here? Oh, this person, sorry, I didn't talk about signs. So this person could be a Virgo um, with the Magician card. I also feel Gemini with the Magician and the Lovers card with the Mercury energy there. We also have Leo here. So lots of fire, but lots of air is what I feel. Honestly, this Seven of Swords business, what I'm mostly feeling with that is that at times... Um, especially as you start to get more comfortable with each other, I see you guys starting to feel silly for your insecurities. You start to tell yourself, oh, that's so stupid. Like, why am I... I have no reason to be afraid, but you're still... You have this, this niggling sense of doubt. And instead of speaking, you kind of just... You suppress it. You push it away and you tell yourself you're silly and you shouldn't be thinking that. And that is why this reason, this cause for concern keeps, keeps lingering because um, as this connection develops into its later years, like I'm talking like five plus years of being together, those certain insecurities are still there, but you, you don't address them anymore. And then it starts to become more of, of a blockage because it's, it's not something that's spoken about anymore. So that's something to be wary of for you guys. Um, I feel like you both have this, but communication about it becomes less and less, or few and far between is, is what I was hearing. 
Um, so definitely don't let that limit you. Continue talking about it. Um, bring it to the light. No matter how silly you feel, you both feel that way. <laughs> you both feel that way and you're both going to be able to pull each other out of it as well by showing each other that it's not what is genuinely happening. Um, and that doesn't mean gaslighting. <clears throat> that doesn't mean discrediting that person's fears or making them feel silly for feeling that way. It just means, you know, exploring that and um, telling each other um, each other's truths and perceptions of that same event, for example. Like, if, if you have friends of the opposite sex, I see your person overthinking, like, what you do when you spend time alone with them, and vice versa. So instead of just... Um, saying, you know, oh, well, I've been friends with this person for years before I met you. Like, you can't keep making me feel guilty for spending time with them. It's about maybe spending more time together and just talking about it in a healthier way so that as time develops, it doesn't become a taboo subject because that's what it feels like. It feels like, well, every time I talk about that, they just get angry with me, so I'm not going to talk about it anymore. All these major arcanas are indicating to me that the two of you are a significant connection. You are meant to be together. Um, you just need to be more open in terms of your, your insecurities, especially in the later years. Don't discredit your feelings. Um, getting channeled messages now in terms of what your person would say. Look at that. I'm too afraid to talk. Yes. I see that happening later on in the connection. Group 2, please, Spirit. What would Group 2's future spouse say if they could say anything to them right now? Yeah. Yes. So you guys might meet on, like, a drunken night out, apparently. <laughs> That'll only apply to some of you. We have the Ace of Cups again. So listen, this person cares about you so much. Um... This person, you might come into their life when they're in a bit of a dark space or vice versa. One of you is struggling. You might both be struggling, but I see you coming together as like soulmates. You help each other through this dark time. You help each other find the light again, apparently. You help each other be more grounded. You help each other through some sort of confusing situation here. Um, with the Ace of Wands, this is a very passionate beginning. In fact, it feels like it wasn't really meant to be a relationship. Like, it feels like you were both just looking for fun, you decided to hook up, <laughs> and then the connection just blossomed from there. The start of your connection is really fun. It's very lighthearted, it feels playful, it feels like it's an escape almost from the serious things that you have going on in your life. With the Ace of Wands and the Three of Cups here, I see it being a very magnetic connection, especially in the early days. There is a feeling as though as life gets more serious, um, it's not that the spark dies, but the feelings grow more. So instead of the spontaneous, um, not too concerned about tomorrow energy, you start to become very attached to each other over here. You start to really feel um, very strong feelings towards each other to the point where maybe one of you says I love you really early in the relationship and it's kind of just said at a moment when neither of you were actually expecting it um, and that person feels incredibly vulnerable at that time and they kind of dismiss it and say listen you don't have to say anything back like I know we've only been seeing each other for a month like it's okay or even like a week no maybe not a week but the period feels really short here um, with be more selfish in the reverse, you both suddenly have this feeling as though this person means a lot to you and it's hard to pretend that this is just a fun little connection anymore if the feelings start to come on very strong very quickly. Now over here, your future spouse is telling me that the soul recognition is instantaneous but because the attraction in terms of physical attraction is so strong, it takes a little while for that to kick in. With the Six of Cups here, there is a sense of familiarity. Like, and what I'm hearing is it's just so easy to be together. You have this feeling of recognition within your bodies, within your souls, um, the way that you talk to each other. This person makes you feel very special and vice versa. Like, you look at this person as the magician, you know? They have a silver tongue and everything they say is just like a massive compliment to your ego but this person looks at your adoration for them as the biggest um ego feed as well because they're like oh my god i can't believe this person like is just falling for me like i can see it in their eyes they're so attracted to me like the two of you actually feed into each other that much like it feels very 
there's a connection there, but it's mislabeled in the early days as just like a, a fun little fling. And then very quickly you both realize that the feelings are there and, and they're very strong and it's hard to imagine now um, not being committed to each other. This Eight of Swords is what I was talking about over here with the Seven of Swords. It does feel like um, insecurities later on in the connection are just swept under the rug. Excuse me. And I don't think that, I mean, you guys will be the best judge for your own relationships. This is a general reading. But I do believe that you guys need to be able to talk about this so that you are feeling heard within your relationship. I just see that some of these situations here um, can be completely um, nipped in the bud, which is what came out for group one as well, if communication is clear and constant. It's this sense of, like, you know that this person is a significant connection. You don't want to sabotage that, so you just don't talk about it. The truth is you're both experiencing the same thing in different ways, and there could be a lot of understanding there if you pick your moments well. So I definitely feel like you should try to explore that a little bit more in this connection. There's something to be wary of, something to be mindful of. But I will be going into the blocks more in the extended as well. We'll also be going into the timing and personality traits. Now I'm going to be getting an oracle card just to have a look at what else um, this connection will be like. The oracle card will be a measure of the energy, the overall energy of this connection and what spirit is willing to share with you. So group two, please, spirit. What is the energy of group two's connection? We have, oh yeah, absolutely, rock bottom and encouragement. I'm actually going to show them to you in the upright. So listen, the main energy that I'm getting here is what I was talking about before. The two of you come into each other's lives when you're in dark places, or one of you definitely is, and you help each other get out of that situation. You help each other feel um, strong and confident again. Because in the way that you're impressed or you, you feel really, you love the attention that this person gives you, they also love the attention that you give them. And you have really healing energies towards each other. This definitely feels like a soulmate connection. It's the kind of connection that comes into your life when you really just need someone, you know? You really just, you're going through it, you're in a dark place, you need someone to help remind you that you deserve love, to help show you that you are worthy of being loved. I feel like one or both of you, your early relationships in life, in your 20s or your late teens, it really just stunted your growth. It made you feel like you couldn't be any better than you were. It made you feel like you peaked early. This person comes into your life to encourage you to continue growing. And it's a really healing connection in the sense that you both kind of you become a little bit codependent, but you still help each other grow. With that lover's card, there's still like freedom of choice in this relationship. It still feels like a very wholesome, um, encouraging connection. Now, I'm going to be reading your channeled message as well. So if this is the message I channeled before I started filming for each of the groups. It's different for every group. Group two, please, spirit. Oh, I remember this now. So group two, your numbers, I saw numbers and symbols for you. We got 23, 17, 8 or 89. And the 8 was like a weird symbol for you. It almost looked like an S. We also had like a weird square thing that kept being shown to me. So I just feel what I'm feeling here. And it was also this weird symbol here. That I think your person has really broad shoulders. I also feel like with this square, there's something about this situation, like they're your sanctuary. It kind of feels like this person is such a, a strong person, like there's someone literally who comes into your life when you're at rock bottom, they encourage you to grow and move forward. And a square for me is a pretty stable shape, like it has four even sides and it has a very even shape. Um, I feel like that's what this connection is. You're both very strong together, though. Like, apart, you feel like two loose ends with no rhyme or reason. But together, you have, like, a strong purpose is what it feels. 
Now your message was, you are worthy. I am so grateful to share a life with you, to witness your growth, your power. To say I love you would be an understatement. I am and always will be yours for now and forever. Oh my days. That's crazy how that fits into the energy here. We had the strength card too. So absolutely. This person is an admirer. Um, in admiration for your strength and your courage and I really feel like you both choose to overcome your challenges together there's this feeling of being a unit like you both make up this square and without it if you're just two lines you know <laughs> trying to find a reason to exist but together you've created this beautiful life so group two, that was your YouTube reading of a love letter from your future spouse. Oh, my days, excuse me, from your future spouse. I'm going to be taking this over to Patreon now. On Patreon, we will be looking at the potential blocks and challenges of your connection, as well as the timing and personality traits of your future spouse as well. If this is where you're leaving me, look after yourself. Take what resonates. Do not let the rest take from you. And I shall see you in another video. Bye. Hi, group three, and welcome. If you chose the Citrine Tower, then this is going to be your reading. So, goodness me, we're doing a future spouse reading today. And this video on YouTube, I will be asking Spirit for love letter from your future spouse. We'll be getting tarot, channeled messages and an oracle card to reflect the overall energy of your connection. I also have a channeled um, love letter message here, which I channeled before I filmed this, these groups. And we'll read that at the end. There is going to be an extended today. The extended will be on Patreon. The link to our beautiful Patreon community is going to be in the description box below. That's where you can access the extended to this reading. In the extended group three, I'll be going into the potential blocks and challenges that this connection may face, as well as a timing um, to help you understand when this person may be coming into your life in terms of what situation in your life you'll be in, as well as personality traits for this person to help identify who they may be. All right, now we've got that little bit of housekeeping out of the way. Let's get into the tarot. So group three, please, spirit. What would Group 3's future spouse like to say in terms of a love letter for Group 3? Okay, we have the Seven of Wands. That's been coming out a lot in nearly all the groups in different decks, which is interesting. Group 3, what would Group 3's future spouse like to say in terms of a love letter? love letter for group three please we have the son of pentacles in the reverse interesting oh i just heard i wish i knew then what i knew now what i know now i wish i knew then what i know now goodness this person gained experience you helped this person overcome the challenge maybe it was like they felt like they were just a, a, an experienced young person who oh who couldn't have what they wanted, but they really bloody wanted it, so they went for it anyway. There's a lot of attraction towards you here. We have the Eight of Wands. So we, I was also shown the Devil, and now we have the Star. So you stand out to this person, so much so that it, it made them look back at themselves and go, I'm not enough. There's no way this person would want me. And you did. You wanted them. Clearly, this is going to be your future spouse, so... I think this person had to overcome a lot of fear in order to move towards you. We have the Five of Wands, my favorite card, apparently. This is another card that's come out in nearly all the groups so far. Um, that card talks about a difference of opinions. So it could be other people's opinions. It could be that the two of you just... This person thought that you wouldn't want them, whereas you're on the other side going like, why hasn't this person asked me out yet? <laughs> like, they let their fears get the better of them, and they wish they knew then what they know now. We have the moon clarifying our page of pentacles in the reverse. What else do we have? And then I can channel the energy for y'all. We have the three of wands now. Goodness, beautiful creative energy here. I love how this deck just has little splashes of color throughout the cards, and it's mostly that like gray, black and white etching. There's a lot of energy in these cards. We have the sun here and the ten of swords, both reversed. 
All right, so I'm going to put that over there. Your bottom deck energy, group three, is the Ace of Cups. So please know, no matter what challenges this connection faces, no matter what the hell happens in terms of a difference of opinions, in terms of people's fears getting the better of them, in terms of other opinions being more valued than the ones that truly matter, which are your own, your person holds a lot of love for you. Your person is incredibly... Ad what's the word they have a lot of admiration towards you they feel very attracted to you to the point where they there's a fear of not meeting your expectations your future spouse would tell you that you taught them how to stand in their power how to appreciate um who they are and they constantly even throughout this connection they're constantly afraid of of whether um they meet your expectations. Your future spouse has this energy where they feel like they're holding you back, group three. They look at you and they look at them and they're like, why is this beautiful being with me? Like they could do so much better. And I feel like they're constantly having to prove to themselves and others that they're worthy of your love, especially over here with our seven of and five of um, wands. This card here is all about fears. For me, it's overcoming your challenges and the, those voices within that tell you you're not good enough. And this card here is about overcoming those voices that are right in front of you telling you you're not good enough. So it seems like this person is facing so much um, backlash almost by feeling connected to you, by having feelings for you. They feel like other people are judging them instantly and telling them they're not good enough. And they overcome these challenges, but they want to tell you that they really wish they knew then what they know now. Because I feel like it was a long battle of working up the courage and just the mental strength to be able to ask you for this sort of relationship. I feel like they, their fears got the better of them. In the early days, they were facing a lot of challenges, a lot of adversity here. They constantly felt like they weren't good enough for you. They constantly felt like they um, were having to overcome their own inner demons. And then it was like other people were telling them exactly what they were saying to themselves. And they started to feel like all of their fears were coming true. And I feel like they spent a long time internalizing this fear with the moon card here and the Sun of Pentacles, that's telling me that they didn't feel good enough. And even now, as I'm channeling their energy of the future, you know, they're telling me that they still wonder if, if, they, if you settled for them, if they are putting you in a compromising position. Your person really looks up to you. They see you as a pillar of the community, apparently. You're quite inspirational. You might have, like, a platform where you're able to connect with a lot of people whether that's online or just in your workplace or your school or something like that you are quite influential and this person feels like they don't meet those expectations of what a partner would be like if they were with you with the sun of pentacles in reverse um i want to say that this person kind of feels like they lose themselves a little bit in this relationship i have to be honest my group threes this is the kind of person who, when they enter your life, they're not really quite sure of what they're meant to be doing. And then they find, kind of find their purpose in your shadow. They are incredibly supportive towards your dreams, towards your aspirations, towards your goals. But they do lose themselves. They lose sight of what they want. They lose sight of their own career. This is the kind of person who, it's like Corey Gamble and Kris Jenner, you know? <laughs> Um, what does he do? You know, he's, he's incredibly supportive. He seems like a very loving husband, at times controversial in terms of his relationship towards the sisters, but um, it feels like it's that kind of relationship where regardless of who's the feminine or the masculine here, this is the person who, who lives in your shadow in the relationship. They lose track of themselves. They, they kind of lose track of their own dreams, their own purpose here. And they become incredibly supportive towards yours. Whether you're, um, like for example, perhaps your career requires a digital analyst and this person has a background in IT. They start to gain more wisdom and experience and in, into um, analytics and SEO in general, can I say? I'm not minded that way, but um, 
it feels like they start to tailor their career towards your success. So there's a sense of like, and even even then, there's no there's no feeling of like I'm missing out. There's more of a feeling of are they missing out? Like this person isn't at all upset that they their whole life revolves around you. They're almost sitting there in your shadow, going, "Do I meet their expectations? Like, am I good enough? Do they want more? Do they desire more?" That is the energy that I get here. There is that. Um, energy around them my group threes and as we move over here I'm getting more ones energy so we had the um, sorry the seven and the five over here and now we have the eight and the three now eight of ones is about um, fast movement it can represent communication it generally to me is like a quick energy it feels like a fast energy something that builds momentum with the three of wands here, it's a feeling of like waiting. It's a feeling of like you, you've invested the energy and now you have to wait for that energy to return. So I feel like your connection with them is incredibly exciting at times. And then there's these periods where it just gets a little bit, I don't want to say boring with the three of wands. It's not boring. Like maybe you guys are just traveling a lot. Um... I think that you have so much love for this person, but there's this underlying fear that you're going to cut them off. Like, I feel like group three, with the three of wands here, they've tried to really project themselves into your future here. Like, look at the way that these ones are bound together. It's not depicted like that in other tarot decks. I feel like you inspire this person, you really do, um, but they haven't figured out their own way to manifest that inspiration their inspiration is like pushed towards a shared future with you which isn't a bad energy um it's just that they never fully feel secure in this relationship they always feel like there are ways that they could be doing better they could be better and maybe that's something that your relationship thrives off because i feel like you do constantly evolve here you are um, someone who has some sort of influence like your career is quite substantial to the point where this person's whole life almost becomes revolved around it your future spouse would tell you that they have so much um, desire for your success here with these cards your future spouse is incredibly passionate about your success they're so happy for you they're so proud of you they are such a supportive energy group three in fact they feel like their main fear in this relationship is that they're not being supportive enough, like they're not giving you enough. They, if they could, they would give you the shirt on their own back, you know? They, they honestly feel like you deserve the world. And I feel like the two of you will travel a lot together with these two cards. There's this feeling of traveling. Um, I feel like maybe this connection moves really fast for some of you. Like one minute you're texting, the next minute you're leaving toothbrushes at each other's houses, you know? And then you decide to take a big trip together. And when you get back, you decide that you love spending time together, so you're going to get a house together or get an apartment together. It's this feeling as though you reach your milestones fairly quickly in this relationship. And I feel like the two of you very quickly form this this passionate bond and you start to project each other into your futures like you start to say hey do you want to help me with this on the weekend like it's up to you I know you got work and then it turns out they're really good at that and all of a sudden you're like well do you want to just join my business <laughs> like can I hire you and this person's like in your mind you're thinking I hope that's not degrading like I don't mean to put them on a lesser level but your person's like, yes, 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 <laughs> yes, 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 I would love to be a part of your business because that means I'll be a part of your future, like, that's how they see it. They're more than happy to help you, in fact, they're very supportive, it really just feels like they kind of lose themselves in you, my group threes, they do, they lose themselves in your energy because you are out here as the star and we have the sun and we have the ten of swords so I feel like this this relationship is um, something that does inspire the both of you to create quite a big um, I want to say like a big pool of success is, is what the words that came to mind but with the ten of swords here I feel like these issues kind of build and build and build until 
this person just bursts because they don't like to bring it up early. They don't like to talk about it at the start. They don't like to talk about it even at the middle. Like they, they, they wait and they wait and they wait. And then all of a sudden they just get really down and maybe they even just burst into tears one night and you're like, Hey, what's going on? Are you okay? Um, you know, like this isn't like you, what's going on? Talk to me. I care about you. And then they tell you, like, I, I just feel like you're this beautiful person and you do so much for so many people and you're so inspirational and I sometimes just feel like I'm not measuring up to the person who you need. And I feel like that's what this Ten of Swords is talking about, is that this person carries all these swords in their back and it's like a martyr situation. They end up martyring themselves when they don't actually need to be in that situation. You talk about it, the, the fears are addressed immediately and the swords fall out. And it's just something that happens every now and then because they internalize a lot of this fear. With the Sun card reversed here, I feel like you have a lot of happy moments together. I just feel like one or both of you may have... Um, I want to say like bouts of, of, of feeling down. Um, what I'm picking up is that there's a sense of pessimism here. And it might just be pessimism or for some of you, group three, and again, this is a general reading. I won't draw conclusions over mental health, but I am feeling like something like depression here with the sun card. It's a feeling of guilt. It's a feeling of guilt because there you have every reason to be happy. You're traveling, you're making memories together, you're... you're um, you're having all your wishes come true but this person feels guilty at times because they do feel down and they start to feel like they're not good enough and it could be because this person has or experiences bouts of depression occasionally and they're usually really good at managing it by themselves they don't like burdening you with this they feel like it's it's a really guilt guilty feeling um, so they kind of internalize it and then every now and then you might catch this person crying and they, they think it's a private thing. Maybe they're in the shower or maybe they think you're asleep. Um, but you, you see it and you're like, hey, what's, are you okay? What's going on? And then they kind of open up to you and tell you the truth. And they tell you that they love you so much that you make them so happy. And there is this fear that they're going to lose you as well. There's this fear that they don't meet your expectations. So they are quite a soft, beautiful soul, group three. They are someone who cares about you so much. They're very supportive of your dreams. Um, I just think that this little this little thing here, whatever's happening, you guys get overcome it every time through clear communication with this Ten of Swords. Immediately, the swords are pulled out of this person's back. You talk about it, you address it, and you're like, hey, it's okay to have these feelings. Like, thank you so much for, for opening up to me. I know that takes a lot of strength. That takes a lot of courage. And I'm so sorry to hear that you've been carrying this for the past couple of months. Like, I wish you had come to me sooner, but I'm so happy you did now. Now we can talk about it. Now I can tell you how much I care about you and that I really want a future with you. And I acknowledge your fears and I know that they cause you real pain, but I can promise you that I have only love for you and I want a future with you. It's sort of those kinds of conversations that really help your person. And I feel like they are pretty good at doing this anyway. Um, I just think that it's those occasional moments when you catch them crying and you're like, your heart just breaks. You're like, what is going on with my beautiful person? Why are they so upset? Because I think that they're quite a strong person. Perhaps they come across as quite masculine or even if they are the feminine, they just, they're very resilient is what I feel so when they cry it's it's just instantly pulls at your heart you're instantly like oh my gosh what's going on it breaks your heart to see them like that okay now I'm gonna be getting child messages from this person as well oh speaking of heart we have listened to your heart and you matter oh what else would group three's future spouse like to say we have this love scares me absolutely i feel that because they become very attached to you we have wrongful advice and we have i'm obsessed with your body and i was feeling passion there's a lot of passion here with all these wands listen the sex is good with this person this is the kind of person who would be a very selfless lover group three we have look at this yes i'm gonna leave that over there 
because that's a story that needs to be told. And we have the Six of Wands in reverse. So I do see a lot of travel for you. I do see a lot of fear. I see that your person is grateful for the fact that you help them overcome their fears. Your person is telling you that they are out here trying to be your hero, but really you are their hero, group three. You are their hero. Like <laughs> They are trying to be successful for you, but you inspire them and you rescue them so many times. We have listened to your heart over here because I do feel like they are constantly getting wrongful advice. Look at what the cards this fell on. Fear is constantly playing into their, their um, heart space and they have to... Frequently is what I want to say. Frequently ground themselves and tell themselves, hey, listen to your heart. This isn't real. They're very good at doing that by themselves, though. We have you matter, and I'm obsessed with your body. This person will make you feel very special. They're going to, honestly, most of your sexual experiences with this person, they're going to make love to you. Like They appreciate every inch of your body. You are incredibly precious to this person, group three. Your future spouse is completely supportive and devoted towards you. Now we have this love scares me because they are afraid of losing you. They're confused by their feelings. They feel so strongly towards you. And yet sometimes when they're in that dark space, their mind tells them that they could lose you. They start to question how much you care. They start to question their happy memories with you. They start to question how long it's going to be before you wake up and decide that you're better than that and you don't want to be with them anymore. But the best way that they get overcome all of this, they're very good at self-regulating these thoughts by themselves, but they want to say that they're so grateful for those moments where you just know exactly what to say. With the Ace of Swords here, sometimes you don't even realize it. You, They could be sitting there stewing in this feeling of like doubt and you turn around, you look at them, you smile, and you tell them the, how much you love them. And instantly, all their fear is shattered. Instantly, they just want to hold you and kiss you. And they're so grateful for those moments. I feel like this person is constantly at war with themselves. Maybe they just have a lot of anxiety, maybe. I just realized how quickly I spoke throughout that whole channeled messages portion. So it does feel like they are incredibly grateful for you group three they honestly your future spouse is a very supportive person and they're very good at overcoming a lot of their fears by themselves they're constantly worried about saying the wrong thing to the people in your life as well they're constantly worried about um making giving the wrong impression and i feel like they were either single for a very long time before you came into their lives or you were single for quite some time um this is the overall energy of your connection. Bottom deck energy is deep freeze. So it's kind of like you brought this person back to life. We have encouragement here. So the general energy of your connection is all about encouraging one another, helping each other overcome adversities that you face. And I really feel like this person is quite supportive of everything that you do. They honestly, they do lose themselves a little bit in your story. They start to become so... Um, I want to say attached, but it's not like they're just there like a leech, like a parasite. No, they really do contribute to your success. They really do become this supportive figure who's very dedicated to your success. Now, I'm also going to read your channeled message. We'll see what your person has to say. So your future spouse. I was seeing the peace symbol. I also saw a six. And I saw two eights. One of them was on a slant. It was a really weird symbol. So I feel like at times um, this connection kind of goes around in cycles. Some some days are really good. Some days are tricky. You got to talk about it. You got to address the fears. You got to hold each other. You got to tell each other how much you love each other, and then you're able to move forward. But you always pull each other out of it. You're incredibly grateful for one another. Now, this is so precious. For you guys, I heard that beautiful song, um, My Love, My Love, My Love, They Keep Me Warm. That's what it felt like. It was so precious. And I was just like, and it makes sense with the Ace of Cups. It was just giving me this gorgeous, like, warm feeling of when you're just, like, cuddling someone and you feel so secure and safe. That is the energy of your relationship. So your message is, My Love, My Love, My Love Keeps Me Warm. You keep me warm. I've wanted you for so long. I am the luckiest person on earth and I pray we have an eternity together. I found you and I shall never let you go. Your sweetheart. And they put a little love heart here. So they feel like such a soft, 
beautiful soul, group three. Honestly, this is such a beautiful soul and they're so supportive of you. So group three, I'm going to take this into the extended now. In the extended, we'll be looking at potential blocks and challenges of this relationship, as well as timing um, and just looking into the situation of when this person may come into your life. I will also be getting messages from the tissue box where we will be looking into personality traits. So if you want to join me in the extended, the link to that is in the description box below. It will take you to our Patreon community. Otherwise, if this is where you are leaving us, then sending you so much love and light. Take what resonates in this beautiful reading. Do not let the rest take from you, and I shall see you in another video. Bye! Hi, Group 4, and welcome. If you chose the clear crystal tower, then this is going to be your reading. I'm going to put your message over there. We'll, we'll look into that and delve into that at the end. So today's reading is extra special. It is in collaboration. I'm going to leave a beautiful link down below so that you can have a look at Gifted Soul's YouTube channel as well. She has done the exactly same reading, so it will be a beautiful opportunity to cross-reference and just get further messages, if I'm honest. These readings are so fun and just a beautiful way to kind of just forget about things for a little while, you know? And figure out where you're headed as well. These people, in terms of your future spouse, may be a lot closer to you than you realize. So make sure to check out Gifted Soul. Um, a link to her channel will be in the description box below. I'm going to start with Tarot today. We're going to be getting a love letter from your future spouse with Tarot. We also have channeled messages, oracle cards. And I will be getting a oracle card to show us just the general energy of your person and this connection. Just so you get an idea of what that relationship is going to look like. There will also be an extended reading today. In the extended, I will be going into um, blocks and challenges in this relationship, potential blocks and challenges, um, the timing in terms of your situation, what you will be doing or what your situation will look like to sort of let you know when this person will be coming in. And I will also be pulling personality traits from the tissue box. So those are going to be available in the extended. The extended is on Patreon. You can join the Patreon community to have access to the extended readings. So, group four, I feel like I've done enough housekeeping. Let's get into this. And what would group four's future spouse like to share in a love letter? Oh, hello. Oh, sweetheart. You make me so happy. That's what they're saying. You make me so happy. Oh, I just heard horny as well. Okay, listen. Let's focus on one emotion at a time. Oh, my days. Um, so you make them so happy and horny, apparently. Yes, they want me to take that. It was this card that made me say that, and now it's coming out for the real... For the real main event. So, we have the Nine of Cups, the Six of Cups, and the Son of Wands here. Let's, let's start with this energy, actually. And then I'll clarify, because your soulmate, your, I've said soulmate straight up, oh my gosh. Your future spouse's energy is so wholesome, group four. They have so much respect for you. There's this feeling as though you're in a position where you have the ability to help a lot of people heal here. With the nine of cups and the six of cups, I feel like this person just sees you helping so many people heal. And it's like your effort is minimal here with this tree. Your, your trunk is stable, it's secure, it, it has a strong foundation. You just do what you do and you do it so well it reaches so many people. And that's what's happened to them. You've also helped them in this situation. You helped them heal. So for some of you, listen, this person you could have met through whatever you do to help others and they were like a little bit of a fan. <laughs> they were a little bit of a fan group four and then it was like, oh my gosh, I'm attracted to my fan. What do I do? But your person just feels so connected to you. They're a part of your root system is what it feels like. You inspire them and they inspire you. There's this even give and take, like the Six of Wands card, which is about a hero. Um, that hero thrives off the energy of the crowd and the energy of the crowd thrives off this image of a hero come to um, protect them and show them that they're able to look after them. 
So it feels really balanced here, like you're, there's this beautiful admiration for you. And it's just the way that these cards came out. It was this instant feeling of like love and devotion, if I'm honest. There's a lot of devotion here. Can I clarify these energies, please? What would Group 4's future spouse say to them in a love letter? Oh, we have the High Priestess now. Yes, there is strong connection here. A very strong connection. In fact, like this came out for a lot of the groups. I feel like you, anyone who's watching this video, <laughs> Surely you have somewhat of a curious mind towards spirituality. You're somewhat in tune if you picked this group and you've picked other pick a card readings and you've resonated with the messages somehow. I love that the viewers are so quick to say that, well, thank you so much. But the truth is it's your intuition that found that group for you, you know? And I feel like this person... There's an element here of this connection that a little bit is, is a little bit scary, it a little bit terrifies them. It makes them feel like this is something really big and really serious because they haven't really had this before with anyone else. They've had like somewhat of like an emotional connection, they've had somewhat of a physical connection, but this is like next level. This is a spiritual connection and they feel that. There's a little bit of an element here where they don't understand it. They don't fully understand how it works. They don't fully understand the purpose of it or, or like how and why it happens. But they're very, very, very happy. So they're not going to question it. They're just embracing it as a beautiful opportunity to merge their life with a beautiful person. And that's what they see you as. This incredible person who just ticks all of their boxes. They are so connected to you. They admire you so much. And they just feel so grateful to be able to contribute to this beautiful tree. It's like you are so um, strong and secure and stable. And your person just feels like the more you grow, the more they grow. Like that's how the two of you are connected. They, they're constantly just... I feel like they're constantly holding you. That's what the energy of this future spouse is like. It's like a not a tight, possessive hug, but it's like a warm... Like, loose yet secure and safe hug, you know? Like, you don't feel smothered. It's the kind of hug that you're not expecting, so it doesn't need to be really tight. But <laughs> when it comes, you're just like, oh, thank you. I feel really special. I feel really treasured and appreciated. And that's what this person's energy is like. They do these little things. And sometimes it's really goofy, I want to say. Like, this person has a really childish sense of humor at times. Like, they'll do things and you're just like, are you serious? <laughs> not here. Like, why? But it instantly puts a smile on your face. And it could be so simple, it could just be like a quick remark, or it could be like them just changing the way they walk, <laughs> and it just makes you laugh. And there's this playful nature to your connection that really just keeps the two of you in this beautiful little a love sack of connection. You're both very much in tune with each other's emotions though, and I can see that being a potential challenge, but we'll get into that on Patreon. So I'm going to clarify the Six of Cups now. What else can you tell me about the Six of Cups? Oh, we have the tower in reverse. And I also want to show you the, oh, we had the Nine of Pentacles too. So um, we have the Ace of Wands here reversed. So the Nine of Pentacles reversed, the Star, the Seven of Pentacles, and the Devil reversed. So your person could be an Aquarius or a Capricorn. They could be on the cusp. They could also be a, mm, listen, I haven't done my homework yet. I'm so sorry. I will look into the tower and figure out exactly what, um, planet or sign it's ruled by. I feel like it's Uranus. I really do. I feel like it's that Aquarius sort of energy of reinventing yourself, but I'll look into that further. What I'm feeling here though is actually like a transformative energy here. So your person would tell you that you had been through most of your challenging experiences without them. You had to rebuild your strong tower by yourself you had to lay those foundations by yourself you had to grow into this beautiful tree by yourself but they feel incredibly humbled and privileged to be able to watch you blossom and bloom it's like and they're, they're a little bit sad that, that you had to go through all of that by yourself but they're so incredibly proud of you for it and they see you in such a um like, I want to tell you, Group 4, if you've had this mentality that, you know, what happened to you in the past or any past experiences 
that you've been through that were really hard to go through, that were painful, that were slightly, maybe even traumatic for some of you. I think that some of you may have gotten this mentality that you were broken or wounded or unlovable at times when you're in your darkest moments. This person looks at everything you've been through, no matter how dark it was, no matter how different it was to who you are today. They look at all of that and they just see you as an incredibly strong person. Like, I'm hearing that you're one of the strongest people that they know. And it comes down to your emotional resilience as well. Like, you might be physically strong, but your emotional resilience is incredible. This person looks at you and just thinks, how the hell can any one person on this earth go through all of that? So that might be a hint as to when this person comes into your life. It's this feeling of you've been through so much and I can't believe I have the privilege of looking at this gorgeous, beautiful tree now and appreciating it in all of its glory after everything it's been through. I feel like with this Ace of Wands reverse, your person came after you started a new passionate endeavor. They came into your life while you were still trying to figure out this new adventure for yourself. And they, they came in at a time when you might have mislabeled their connection. You might have said to yourself like, I don't know about them like they they're just very handsy or <laughs> or they they just stare at my body too much or there's something about them that made you think that they weren't serious about this but they very like quickly proved to you um I feel like there was one specific situation that just grounded this situation that grounded your connection and in that moment you were able to realize just how big of a deal this connection is for you for them you're both very much meant to cross paths um, your future spouse would tell you that your transformation has been incredible and they are so grateful that you're a part of their life they feel like you're the kind of person who constantly reinvents themselves group four it doesn't matter if you're burned or scarred like you come out looking more stronger like the stronger more beautiful more handsome like it's just this energy of like they come into your life when you're almost like at your peak but you're not really, because this is telling me that you continue to grow in your connection. This person comes into your life when you have started something new as well that's really passionate. And they feel so privileged to be able to watch this new thing grow. And I feel like it grows really quickly, group four, whether it's a career or a hobby or some sort of interest that you take on board. I feel like it grows really quickly because all of a sudden we have the page of wands over here. Your person would tell you that they are actually very protective over you, group four. Um, even though they have this beautiful, um, safe feeling um, I feel like your connection is very stable and secure. They are actually quite protective over you. They do constantly little things, like <laughs> little things. Listen, like you guys could be lining up to order food um, and it might be like a street vendor, right? So there's a queue of people. There's no real queue though. Everyone's just kind of standing in a group and you're kind of looking around and remembering who was before you and who was after you. So you know when to be like, yep, I'm next. And your person's like low-key sussing out the crowd and being like, like, who, anybody looking at my person? Like, is anyone making eyes with my person? And maybe like you go up to pay and they might be like, no, 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 I've got this. Like, it's okay. I, I owe you one. And then it's not like a way of, um, like it's not taken to the extreme as a form of like control and manipulation. It's just like a little thing. Like that's a crowd of people and maybe there are people looking at you and they just want to make it really clear. Like I'm with them. So I'm going to pay for their meal. Um, not because this is a power and control relationship, but because I want everyone in this group of people to know, like I'm with them. <laughs> like They kind of have that energy, especially with this card. Like look at the way this King Cobra is like fully nestled around this wand like they have this protectiveness over you um i definitely feel like this person has so much sexual desires for you i feel like you've already met this person group four i need to say that it's not going to apply to all of you but with the six of cups here and the ace of wands this is telling me that someone from your past is looking to rekindle that old flame so a lot of people a lot of you may have already met this person for others of you, it's just playing into that beautiful analogy of you having to create your own journey, basically, and pick up the the pieces of your tower moment by yourself. You had to do a lot of healing by yourself, and then this person comes back into your life. Um, 
I was just sharing the Ten of Pentacles reversed with the Two of Pentacles upright. So I want to tell you that your future spouse would say that they never imagined this until they met you. There was something about your life now, like in terms of the future. <laughs> I'm like, I'm in the future, you guys. So <laughs> whatever I say is in context of the future. Um, with the Ten of Pentacles reversed and the Two of Pentacles upright, your person would tell you that until they met you, they never fully realized all that they could have. They never completely comprehended just how wonderful of a future they could have. Like, I'm thinking, like, if before they met you, this is the kind of person who said, like, I don't want to have kids. Kids are a liability. They cost a lot of money. Like, why would anybody do that to our environment? And then they met you, and they would lie with you in bed and be like, I wonder what our kids would look like. <laughs> and I feel like little, like, that's not little, that's major, but things like that, they never imagined until they met you. And with the two of pentacles here, I feel like your relationship is all about compromising. You, There is a level of expansion here with the Page of Wands. It's this feeling as though you both... Um, have the opportunity to experience something new in this relationship no matter what you've been through before no matter how many people you were with before there's something about this relationship that is new it's creative it's fun it's passionate and you get to expand your experience here you get to learn more about yourself as well as love in general in this relationship in a really fun way there's a lot of fun in this connection what else can you tell me about that son of wands please Yeah, I knew this was going to come out. It did come out before. The star card. So your future spouse would tell you that you are such a beautiful person. You're very unique. You guys might look different to each other. There's something about you that helped this person expand their perspective on life. You gave this person a new lease on life, group four. They are so inspired and motivated by you. And there's this feeling as though, like, before you... They didn't have this perspective or this opinion, and now they, they are able to look at life from almost like a child's point of view, in the sense that they're able to completely reinvent themselves, and this connection gives them another chance, another lease on life is what it feels. They're able to be someone who they kind of never expected to be. Your bottom deck energy is the Seven of Pentacles. So your person would say that they hate that they had to wait so long to be with you. They hate that it took so long for the two of you to come into each other's lives. But they want to tell you that every single second together is worth it. No matter what challenge you face, no matter what adversity um, arises, um, they can appreciate that if all, all of it, before and during your relationship, it all led to that beautiful moment of realizing that the two of you want to spend the rest of your lives together and that you were meant you were meant to come together exactly when you did. Now I'm going to get channeled messages as well. I'm already at 17 minutes, so these are going to be short. Group four, please, spirit. What would their future spouse say? Oh, we knew that, didn't we? I just want you all the time, the Eight of Wands. Please ignore my demanding cat. The Eight of Wands. So there is a lot of passion here. There is a lot of, well, there, we know that you're the kind of person who does this to them. That Son of Wands, as soon as it came out, I felt that energy immediately. It was just like an instant, um, you make me smile, you make me so happy, and then it was, you make me horny. So straight away, instant. We have gossip only hurts more. So I feel like if this person is already in your life, they want a fresh start with you. They want to settle it once and for all. They want to talk about whatever happened in the past. They want to address any concerns here. With the um, purple on that card, it feels like somewhat of an intuitive connection. It feels like... Um, if this person is already in your life, there's been a lot of time and space between the two of you and it's kind of coming into this high priestess energy again. There's an element of this connection that terrifies them, but not knowing the full potential is scarier, you know? It's like this connection is so strong that it's, it's a little bit scary, but what's even scarier is having to go through the rest of their life without knowing like what if I did end up taking a chance with that person and that's where they're at right now group four they're like you know what's worse than than feeling like this person knows things about me that nobody else knows is 
never having a chance to fully understand what could happen if I did reach out, if I did try to ground this. And with that, I want a fresh start with you. It's the Ace of Wands. It's like a rebirth, a repurposing of old energy. We have you hurt me, but that's okay, I guess. This was in the reverse. I did flip it. So I kind of feel like your future spouse would say that it took a lot of courage to make this connection work, especially in the early days. This connection did need a lot of communication. Fears had to be addressed. You had to... I think they had to, someone had to work up the courage to actually ground this because there was so much passion and then there was so much fear. So it had to hit this moment where, you know, the situation needs to ground, basically. We need to figure out how to move forward here. And I think that it took a lot of um, courage is the main thing that I'm picking up on. And we have that Aquarius energy with the star again. So I feel like communication helped this connection ground. Naturally, you don't just become committed without talking to each other. But group four, please. What would their future spouse say? We have my life started when I met you. So there was a soul recognition moment here. I feel like there was a catalyst um, situation. Like this person came into your life. And or vice versa, someone entered someone's life and then everything started happening. And for those of you that it resonates, there may have been some sort of separation there where you had to just let life flow in front of you and roll with the punches, so to speak. It's kind of like this person leveled up after meeting you and they became so um, distracted, I want to say. It's, it's not distraction though. Their purpose was to pursue the other areas of their lives. And then they were able to, once they were more stable, come back and and have this fresh start with you. That is going to resonate for those of you who already know this person. For others of you, I feel like this connection helps shape the two of you. You come into this energy with the Page of Wands where you're both curious about each other, you're both um, feeling like this is somewhat of a new experience and you're both very hungry to explore this together. What else would Group Four's future spouse say to them? goodness me we have I would do anything for you the ten of cups it was actually shown to me in the reverse so what I feel and this is only for those of you who resonate the main way that this connection grounds is that this person or you two both have this beautiful heart-to-heart -heart conversation where emotions are just poured out emotions are just completely poured out and you're able to understand what, what each other truly wants and I think you're both incredibly surprised to realize that you both want the exact same thing. You both want the same happy ending. You both want that same little bit of freedom, perhaps, with all this Aquarius energy to continue evolving and inventing yourself. And you both ultimately just want each other. Um, bottom deck energy is you are so very special. So it's kind of like your, your future spouse is hinting that you both kind of think that this connection isn't going anywhere. And then it just before, just as you've given up on it, 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 it re-sparks, it rekindles. It's like it's not over yet with the world card reversed. It's not over yet. I need to tell you, you are so very special to me. Now, I am going to get an oracle card to highlight the energy of this connection. So, group four, what card would best describe their connection with their future spouse? Group four... We have unexpected visitors. What an interesting energy group for. So I feel like there's an element of surprise here in this connection. And I'll delve into that in the extended. It feels like this connection takes you both by surprise. You're not expecting it. It's There is some sort of separation here or lull. Or it's like you think it's over, but it's not over. There's an element here where you're not really expecting each other. And then all of a sudden you're there and you can't imagine living life without each other. And with coming to life reversed, I feel like you're just out here focusing on your own goals, your own visions. And then all of a sudden it's like you're back in each other's lives or you're in each other's lives full stops. It's kind of like you weren't looking for it. You thought you were fine by yourself. And then this person comes and you're like, oh my God, like I'm not even scratching the surface of my potential. This person is amazing and I need them immediately. That is how your person feels about you. So I'm going to be showing you your channeled message now. So group four, this is the channeled message that I channeled from your 
future spouse's point of view. Now yours was bloody interesting. You got the number five, but it was like in a circle, so it made me think of coins. You also got the triangle, which I thought of like collaboration. So I feel like you are going to help each other to expand um, some aspect of your career, or you might start a business together, or there's kind of this element is like you have shared hobbies that become really popular, and it's something that you collaborate on. There's this feeling as though you help each other expand here. And we have the teardrop, so I feel like tears are shed in this connection. Some of you, you've given up on this person, and then you have the opportunity to start fresh with them. I also had this weird symbolism, and I saw it in the crystal, actually. So what I feel like that is, is, and look, we have courage here, so it took a lot of courage. What I feel like this is, is, um, you know, when you have that one house plant that no matter what you do, it's just not coming back to life, it's dead. You've tried and you realize, man, maybe I overwatered it. So you kind of just leave it on the windowsill and you're like, please, Lord, grace this beautiful plant. <laughs> Help it thrive and survive. And it's literally so dead. So you start picking off the dead leaves and you just leave it there. Maybe you've even forgotten about it. But when you come back to it, there are signs of new growth. That is what I was seeing. It's like a new growth coming out of barren soil. So this is your message, Group 4. I can see clearly now. I understand why it all had to happen, and I love you even more for it. There is no more pain, no shame or guilt. Just love, peace, and harmony. I miss you with love from your dear. Oh my gosh, Group 4. So I feel like most of you already know this person. Oh my goodness. That is where I'm ending the YouTube reading, Group 4. I will be taking this onto Patreon now. On Patreon, we'll be looking at blockages or potential challenges in this connection. We will also be looking at timing, your circumstances around this, and we'll be going into personality traits as well. So make sure, um, if you would like to have access to that extended, you have a look at the Patreon link in the description box below and figure out if any of the tiers appeal to you. Otherwise... If this is where I'm leaving you, please look after your wonderful selves. Thank you so much for exchanging your energy with me, and I hope to see you in another video. Bye!